Hi there, it's Ruth here, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and today we're going to be making this gorgeous card here. It is extremely 3D, you're not going to be able to get this uh, through the post uh, uh, flat envelope rate. You're going to have to uh, maybe give this by hand to somebody or uh, package it up in a really pretty box. Um, I love making paper flowers. Uh, if you're new to my channel you may not know that so uh, if you like paper, make a, making paper flowers too then please have a look at my paper flowers uh, playlist because I do have one of those. Anyway, so I'm making use of the gorgeous basket weave embossing folder today. It's You can earn this for absolutely free at the moment when you spend £90 uh, on Stampin' Up! product. You also get a gorgeous stamp set that has a lovely basket and flowers, but today I'm just going to be using the, the embossing folder. So I'm going to not just emboss, but I'm going to put a little bit of ink onto the folder just to increase the sort of depth of the, the colour and texture onto my piece of cardstock. So just so that you know which side to do it on, you've got the Stampin' Up! logo and the Sizzix logo like that. If you turn that and have that onto your piece of um, scrap paper or well, your surface and just brush, this is crumb cake down your embossing folder just to apply a layer of ink and then lay this is Sahara sand so I'm using a very pale brown colored cardstock and then run that through my I'm going to run that through the big shot machine now the thing about these extra thick embossing folders is that you only need one of the uh, clear plates normally we would use two but we're only going to use one So here is what my piece looks like and there's a very, very sort of faint hint of the crumb cake poking through there and it just seems to me to give an extra uh, sort of bit of dimension to the textured card. Now, one of the, the original card that I did, I didn't tear the um, cardstock, but I wanted to show you that very simply you can um, create a bit more of a shabby chic effect by tearing the cardstock just a just a thin slither of it down the side and because we've already passed it through the embossing folder um, it actually makes it a little bit easier to tear so after completing tearing that I've just got a sponge here that I'm going to get a little bit more of the crumb cake ink and then just brush down the sides of my torn card again to give it that just extra bit of aging and kind of that shabby feel. Okay, so I'm gonna set that to one side and get on with making the flowers now. So I've already pre-cut some um, flowers from the Pansy Punch, uh, Pansy Punch and also some circles and I will check the size of this because you're gonna to wanna to know how to make these. So these smaller circles are cut from a one and three eighth circle punch and the larger ones are cut from a one and three quarter circle punch. Now if you don't have those exact sizes, that's absolutely fine. Um, I've made flowers where the, the both sizes have been the same. Um, you know, it, it, just have an experiment. I'm kind of giving you the basic principles of how to make this, but it's very much for you to make it your own. So I've got some flirty flamingo ink here. Now, just a reminder, this colour is going to be retiring this year. So if you do like it, get it while you can, because there usually is a little bit of a crazy rush towards the end of our catalogue period, which is the end of May. And uh, people like to stock up on their colours and, um, you know, they start to realise that, oh, they're going to go. We need to get them quick. So that's why I'm saying get them now while you can. So just add those reinkers or those ink pads now to your orders so that you're not disappointed. Often these things can end up on eBay or on Facebook groups in years to come and certain colours get very sought after and fetch a very good price. So um, I'm, I'm saving you money by telling you to order now. <laughs> right, then we've got three of the smaller circles and I'm just going to add some colour to those. And then, you know what, I think I'm going to just stop filming and come back once I've done all of the others. So I've just got to do the uh, berry burst ones. So I've got 
Berry Burst cardstock here. I think it's Berry Burst. It might be rose red. It's either one of those lovely dark colours. Um, and I'm just going to add an extra bit of colour to this now. Okay, so once you've got the ink onto your pieces of uh, pe your petals, you, then you need to get a pair of pointy nose tweezers. Now, if you can't get hold of those, that's fine. You can just use your fingers um, and just scrunch and work the, the paper. And don't be afraid of really giving it a really heavy kind of scrunch. Of course, don't go so hard that you tear the paper, but it's okay just to really get loads of um, creases into there. That's why I tend to use my, my tweezers because I find it's a little bit easier and quicker um, to get it to do what I want it to do. So I just work in there. So that's my first one. Now the colours I've punched out here are So Saffron, Daffodil Delight and Peekaboo Peach. The idea being that we go from light to dark. So you choose whatever colours you fancy using. You could, you know, maybe just do it all white, a white centre, an all yellow centre, grey, wh whatever you fancy. So if I just quickly go over how I use my tweezers. I have shown this in previous videos, but um, I know that um, it's a it's such a good great technique to be reminded of. Um, if you hold the tweezers, sorry, the, the, the flower in between your tweezers, put your thumb and forefinger over the top and bend your hand so that you're using uh, the top part, the, the um, top of your hand is facing upwards and then twist away with the paper curling up like that. And the reason why I say to have your top hand is so that you've got an extra bit of twist for your, your wrist to go round. If you were to start at this point here, like this with your thumb above, you run out of twist at that point and then you have to bring your hand round again. So if you already start with your hand like this, you've got more of a twist to go round. So that's just a little tip that I give everybody when um, I show them this technique because it it's just makes life easier and you I've mentioned it before you do have to be careful you know when doing repetitive uh, movements like this that you have to bear in mind that your body isn't overexerting itself and and you know doing repetitive things we don't want to hurt ourselves doing this Okay, so then when it comes to these inner petals, so we're going to be working on, so we scrunch that centre bit up, we're going to be working on this now. Again, I use the tweezers, but you don't have to, and just help to get some movement and uh, folds into these circles. And that's, I just do sort of put little scrunches about two thirds of the way around the piece of circle card stock. So I'm just working my way around and around to that point there, breaking up the fibres. And that is the key thing when making anything 3D. You know, paper comes to us flat or cardstock comes flat, but we can, you know, turn it into something 3D and really beautiful and dimensional uh, just by working at those fibres and softening them up and getting them to be loosened. Right, I'm going to carry on doing the rest of these and come back to you. Okay, so once you've done all your circles, you just need to cut some little slits into the uh, the circles that you've moulded. And so I do that by the area that has the least amount of kind of crinkles, you just cut in about one third into the circle. So forgive me not using my little, my usual stamping up stamping snips. Um, my scissors, those little scissors are so good that my children end up using them for their craft work. And before I know it, I have three pairs, would you believe I do have three pairs of those stamping snips and not one of them is on my desk right now. Um, they've all gone a wandering. So I think I'm going to have to buy myself a pair and just hide them in a secret place in my craft room so that I know that I've always got a pair. Right, I am actually heating up my glue gun at the side of me, but you don't necessarily need to use the glue gun for this. I just find it's a bit quicker. But while it's heating up, I'll just show you the first uh, part of this process. So where I've done the slits, we need to just curl over the, the base of the circle a little bit. So where the slit is, we're just going to curl that over and it's worth just having a look at it and then holding it and then seeing the angle in which it's coming up away from uh, your, you know, your, 
your worktop because we need the central ones to kind of come up at a little bit more of an angle than the ones that are going to go around the edges. So when you stick these overlaps together, the, the central one needs to be a little bit more of an overlap to the ones that are going to go on the edges. I hope it's all going to make sense in a second when I start putting it together. So you just need the tiniest amount of glue, overlap it and just hold it. Now, my tip for this is to have a bag of pegs beside you and I always call pegs second fingers because they're very useful for popping onto work like this while you're wanting to get on and do the rest of the project and you don't have to sit there holding things for a few seconds you can just get on with it so that's my little tip just have a bag of pegs I always have pegs in my craft room for different things and um, they do come in handy oh now this one doesn't need to go over so much oops there we go so as you can see it comes comes around quite quick this project um, just got to kind of get into a rhythm of working and you can soon get it done obviously this is going to make up a quite a luxurious special card so you perhaps wouldn't make this card for for just any old cage occasion that's my phone going in the background which I'm just going to ignore for now right there we go there we go it can't have been that important because they hang up so I'm waiting for my glue gun just to heat up a little bit further I want to show you how to tweezer the leaves to get this lovely amount of texture on here so the way to do it is to imagine a real leaf in front of you and where the veins are going to be going. So I'm just going to do this. Just twist very gently into the leaf. And incidentally, this leaf is cut out from the um, lovely leaves framelets that go with the vintage leaves stamp set. I know that the... the Dies often have different names to the stamp sets, but I end up calling the dies what the stamp sets are. So um, if you find the Vintage Leaves stamp set in the catalogue, um, on the same page it describes the name of these these dies. Or if you're going on the website, you can just go to the, the um, Big Shot category and you'll see the dies listed under there. So these dies are from the Mayflower thinlets. These, these two little ones here, or smaller ones rather than those ones. And um, they're, they're just lovely for adding extra foliage into the background of any sort of floral work. So here I've got pear pizzazz on a, a sponge and I'm just adding a little bit of colour then to the edges of this. These have been cut using um, lemon lime twist. And if you just stroke the sponge over the top, it's quite nice because it actually picks up some of the uh, twists and the folds that you've put in, which just gives it an extra bit of texture. Oops, there we go. As you can imagine, the ladies who come to my classes get very inky. But the results are just so lovely that it is so worth it. Right, so we're going to start assembling um, our flower. Now my tip for that is to grab a piece of scrap paper and cut a rough circle out of it. As you can see, mine's you know got a little bit missing, but it doesn't matter. This is just to give you kind of a base to work from. And then I'm gonna get rid of all the pegs because I don't need them now. They should all be nicely stuck together and also the middle part of the flower. So I'm gonna start with the lightest color first, which is kind of a bit hard to see now I've got ink on it, but yeah, there we go. I can see that that's the lightest one. And I'm gonna put some glue. So I'm just moving my plugs up nearer to it. Just a little bit of glue on the inside of the flower like that, and then just squish the flower up together and just keep kind of squishing it even twisting it into your hand in between your fingers 
until it's really firmly kind of glued. Then put a little bit of glue around the edge of that one, get the next colour, pop that in the middle and then just squeeze the flowers up. Now this is why it's so important to do all your kind of wrinkling and uh, tweezer tweezering because it the paper needs to have that texture already in it before you start to try and glue it together otherwise you'll be at this stage and you'll be trying to force it and you might end up with folds in the wrong places so you really it's really important to get all that kind of textural work done first. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for a moment and then work on the main flower. So we actually start from the outside going in. So we're going to get the five uh, petals here and find where it is that they cross over. And it's that portion that we're actually going to be sticking to our base circle here. And all you need is a little bit of glue like that and pop that on the edge there. Now, if you wanted to use the Tombow, that's fine. It just takes a little bit longer um, to dry and you just need to hold the petals down for a little bit longer than what I'm doing here. So I'm just overlapping slightly as I go around and put these down. Now, if you wanted to have six petals or seven petals, you could do that. Um, I've just ended up using five this time but you know do as many or as little as you want now this final one that we're going to put down I want it to overlap the top of what I previously put down but actually sneak it underneath the first petal so that's what I've done there like that and then the three middle ones I'm going to actually assemble away from there, put a little bit of glue just to the left of the join and pop the other petal on there like that and then pop a little bit of glue on the top of that section and then on the bottom of that one and then go in at an angle, so go in like that, like a docking bay and then twist it so that you've got that going onto the top of the glue that was there and then it making contact with the bottom of that one there so that you end up with those in a kind of three form a formation of three so it doesn't matter if that you've got a little bit of glue showing that's all going to be covered up in a second we're going to put some glue on there put that in there like that and then bring back the kind of the center put a good amount of glue onto there and then just hold that in place for a few seconds until the hot glue is completely cooled down and you know that you're safe to kind of start playing with the flower a little bit more. Right, I may as well start assembling my card. So I'm going to put a good amount of Tombow on here. Now I've brought the... I've done it a little bit further in so that I don't get glue everywhere once I put this piece down and I actually quite like the idea of the edges of this cardstock kind of um, coming up a little bit and you can further um, use your fingers and bring this section up a little bit if you want to but make sure that you get the whole body of that really stuck down well. Then you can arrange your leaves however you, you'd like to. I like to have leaves sort of coming from underneath the flower because it really shows it off then that's you know how we find flowers in nature usually um, and then sometimes when we play with nature a bit we arrange flowers and just kind of show them off to their optimum you know ability really no that's not the phrase I want what do I mean you know just just show off the flowers so that we appreciate their beauty even more by having them juxtaposed next to other colours or other textures and so um, it's quite fun to almost flower arrange them on this card now. And then a really good dollop of glue in the centre of those leaves before putting the flower on and again hold it down until it's not moving. Okay, well thank you for sticking with me so far on this video. I know it's a slightly longer one than usual. I just had to show you much more uh, than just a kind of regular stamping. So the final thing that I suggest 
um, to you to do to make this look a little bit more realistic, although obviously it's not real, um, is to get your tweezers and to grab the edges of the petals and just start to curl those in a little bit. Um, it's kind of reminiscent of a wild rose you know, you know how the petals kind of like roll in and roll out different ways and you can even tweak them out like that as well. So just have these kind of rolling in a little bit uh, to give it just an extra bit of dimension. There we go. And so, yeah, if you want to package this up with a pretty box or um, they just about fit into this uh, envelope, hit this that little baggie here um, or of course you can use the envelope punch board to make a, a box or, or one of the bag punch boards to make a bag to, for it to go into um, I think that's just a really gorgeous extra special card uh, on the original one I popped a little a couple of little um, epoxy um, glitter dots there um, which you can do of course as well and if you want to put a sentiment you can but I just think that's so pretty on its own that someone might want to even frame it so um yeah right well enjoy thank you so much for coming and watching me make this and I hope to see lots of your creations um doing something similar maybe try a different color scheme and uh, surprise me see what you do right don't forget you can purchase the these products at artfulstampin.co.uk and um, hope to see you again soon